Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. How are you guys doing today? Okay, so I wanted to do a book haul. I'll tell you why. Number one, because I have ordered like so many books on Audible recently because I had so many credits to use. I was like, just go and just go crazy. So I did one book in particular, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So stay tuned because did you ever see the video that Christine at Poland Banana Books put out where she like is so excited because Stephanie Meyer has a new book and she records the whole thing going to Target and she's like so excited. I love that video. Okay. Um, I got about as I got, <laughs> I got about that excited. <laughs> I got as excited as she did in that video today when I was at half price books and I'll tell you why in a second. So stay tuned. Um, but I wanted to go through all these books that I have been having on my kitchen counter over there. I like cannot speak tonight. What is wrong with me? I'm hungry. I think I need biscuits and gravy from Bob Evans. But anyway, I have had all these books over there um, up on the kitchen counter and I needed to get rid of them. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go through them. Some of them are books that you'll be like, uh, Peter, seriously, something is in my eye. Seriously, are you putting these in a book haul? Yes, because I received them as gifts in the mail, and so why not? I've talked about them in my um, personal vlog, Peter Vlogs, which is listed below. I'm vlogging every day for the year of 2017, and probably 2018 and 19, because I'm having so much fun doing it. And it's just me talking about life, love, books, everything. So anyway, let's get right into this, okay? Are you ready? Okay, for this gigantic, huge spring book haul. The first book that I received in the mail was from Stein. Thank you, Stein has sent me so many books and um, he is just absolutely awesome. And he sent me um, Joe Nesbo's The Bat. And um, I've heard so much about Joe Nesbo and I've actually never read a book by Joe Nesbo. Everybody tells me that he's fantastic, that his thrillers are so good, his mystery thrillers. So I'm super excited about this. Thank you, Stein. If you guys wanna know what it's about, Inspector Harry Hold, the Oslo Crime Squad, is dispatched to Sydney to observe a murder case. Harry is free to offer assistance, but he has firm instructions to stay out of trouble. The victim is a 23-year-old Norwegian woman, a minority celebrity back home. Never one to sit on the sidelines, Harry befriends one of the lead detectives and one of the witnesses as he is drawn deeper into the case. Together, they discover that this is only the latest in a string of unsolved mysteries murders, and the pattern points toward a psychopath working his way across the country. As they circle closer and closer to the killer, Harry begins to fear that no one is safe, least of all those investigating the case. And I'm really excited to read this. So anyway, that's the first thing. Now, a couple of these in here, I cannot remember who sent them to me. I apologize. I think Harmony may have sent me the next two, but I'm not sure. And that is uh, this movie trivia book which has been sitting in my office and people love it. I know it's kind of like old and vintage, which I love. And it has Marilyn Monroe and um, what's his name? Why can't I think of his name? Shoot, anyway, why can't I think of his name? My dad loves him. He thinks he's so funny. He's the one that says, when he's reading the Bible and he says, looking for loopholes. Anyway, um, why can't I think of his name? You guys, somebody in the comment section put who that is. I cannot remember why, the comedian guy. Anyway, um, and then they also got me Two Minute Mysteries, which is literally Two Minute Mysteries. Let me just show you. I've actually read this entire book. I sat like in an hour out front and read all of them. I got totally addicted to it. Like the case of the angry chef. And uh, there you go. It's literally a page and a half. And then at the bottom, it tells you why. And let me tell you, it took me about 10 of these to get through them before I started catching on to the logic of the mysteries. So it's actually a really cute book. Um, okay, so that's the second one. These two have been in my office. So love those. Thank you so much. And then the next one, Stein also sent me. And um, my favorite place to go, I actually talked about this on a booktube video. Um, this is driving me nuts. This is, I, I know who this person is. It's like one of my dad's favorite actors of all times. Anyway, um, should we like do, should we do a trivia, a movie trivia? Okay, let's do one. Okay. He played a small time nightclub comic who becomes involved. Okay, I don't like that. <laughs> Mm. What was James Dean's last film? Oh. Hmm. And it has the answers in the back. So, what is James Dean's last film? Da, 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 da. True story, okay? My friend Craig grew up in Fairmount, Indiana, which is actually the home of James Dean. James Dean and his dad had one of the motorcycles that James Dean rode in around or in one of the movies or something like that. I'm going to actually say... I know it's not... Um, 
Rebel Without a Cause, but I'm gonna say Rebel Without a Cause because I can't actually think of a lot of his other movies. What's the one that takes place in Texas? I actually think that's the one it is, but I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, so when they do the James Dean days every year, my friend, his dad's, his house is, that he grew up in is on the strip, and so they play it. Okay, 139, let's see. Any guesses? Do you guys know? It's gonna be something totally random. You know it is. Forbidden Planet. I never even heard of that. Is that really 139? That can't be right. Forbidden Planet. I never even heard of that movie. So anyway, the next one, I was actually sitting in my favorite place to have brunch in Indianapolis. If you're ever in Indianapolis, go. It's locally owned and operated. They like make a lot of their own food or bring a lot of their own food in from farms and it's Cafe Patashu. There's like four of them in Indianapolis. They're fantastic. I love them so much. Um, and they have like really good chicken salad sandwiches, really good turkey sandwiches. Alex always gets the Cuban breakfast they, and, a, and a bowl of chili. They have great chili, great tomato artichoke soap, artichoke soap, you, soup, soup. You guys are like, Peter, we don't care. But anyway, the story is this, okay? Is that they, they have this croissant French toast and we were sitting there one day and I looked over and there was like this guy and he looked actually, speaking of no, uh, Joe Nesbo, very kind of Norwegian, cute, very tall. And he was just very casual sitting there in a hoodie and like reading this book and the place is packed on Sundays, okay? Families and couples galore. And there he is sitting in the very middle of this whole restaurant by himself reading a book. And I was like, okay, like alone, yes, he was cute. Reading the book, drinking a cup of coffee, eating this croissant French toast, sexy down. And I was like, what book is he reading? Do you guys ever do that when you're out in public? Like if somebody's reading a book, you're like, I have to know what he's reading. So I literally went over as I walked by and I was like, hung my head, like trying to find out. And it was Neil Gaiman's Stardust. And I have, I think I own all of Neil Gaiman's books now and I haven't read any of them yet. Um, and Stein sent me this in the mail and I'm so excited. So if you guys wanna know what it's about, here you go. If you've never read it, Tristan Thorne, okay, catch a falling star. Tristan Thorne promised to bring back a fallen star. So he sets out on a journey to fulfill the request of his beloved, the hauntingly beautiful Victoria Forrester, and stumbles into the enchanted realm that lies beyond the wall of his English country town. Rich with adventure and magic, Stardust is one of master storyteller Neil Gaiman's most beloved tales and the inspiration for the hit movie. Oh, I never didn't know that. Uh, a twisting, wondrous tale full of magic, says the Chicago Tribune. That even makes me even sexier reading that book, doesn't it? So thank you once again to Stein. Now the next book I've actually talked a lot on here. I'm starting to think maybe I put these in my last haul. I'm not sure if I did, I apologize. But my last, um, but it, I've talked about this book in so many booktube videos. I thought, well, throw it in there again. But I received this like two months ago, I think, um, in the mail. I, there was no note. I don't know who sent it to me, but thank you so much. And that is Richard Layman's Endless Night. My friend Dustin is actually reading this right now in Kendall, and he's like, it is so good. But last night he called me and he was like, um, it's a little raunchy. And I was like, yeah, all of Richard Layman's books get a little raunchy. So if raunchy is too much for you, this is probably not the book for you. Um, but it's a horror novel and it's fantastic. And all of his horror novels are fantastic. I think he's better than Stephen King and Dean Koontz. That's just my opinion. And he's no longer with us. He passed away several years ago. But he left a legacy of probably 20 books, 30 books. I mean, he's just so, I love all of his books. And it was interesting because Dustin said to me, he was like, um, there are so many, it says other books by Richard Layman, but like there's so many more than that. But he said there's so many errors in this book. And I was like, well, I mean, a lot of these people that are published just like in books like this, like they're not like there's, my book has errors in it, 24 to be exact. So anyway, um, you guys want to know what this is about? It says, and Stephen King even said on here, um, if you've missed Layman, you've missed a treat. Jody is pretty tough for a 16 year old girl. That's the only reason she's still alive for now. She was sleeping over at her friend Evelyn's house when a group of killers broke in and tried to slaughter everyone. She saw Evelyn spit it on a spear, but Jody managed to escape along with Evelyn's little brother, Andy. Simon was one of the killers that grew some night. His friends have left, him up to him, have left it up to him to find the only living witness to their massacre or else they'll butcher his family next. But Simon has his own reasons for wanting to get his hands on Jody. Um, this book is so good. It's so terrifying. I had to like literally lock the bedroom door when I read it the first time and that was like 10 years ago. So I'm excited about this. And I'm pretty sure I did actually put this on another haul. So once I'm done with these books, I'm putting them over there on the bookshelf. They will never, they will not end up on yet a third book haul. So 
All right. And then the next one is um, a viewer of mine sent this to me. And so I wanted to mention it on this channel. I'm starting to think I did already. But anyway, it's What Doesn't Kill You by Stephanie Carpenter and Martha Carpenter, mother-daughter team. Um, throughout life, we, can we cannot always foresee what lies ahead. This book entails the story of the journey of Martha and Stephanie, a mother and daughter from North Carolina. The focal point lies on tragedy, survival, and determination. This paranormal tell-all, it's a true story, is uniquely written based on the fact that it is written in two parts. This was done in order to provide the reader with two different perspectives. They have faced many aspects of the paranormal and life itself, which you will see unfold within this book. This includes the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. This horrific story may seem unbelievable, but both authors, both authors wanted to share their story in hopes of inspiring others. So, I'm excited about it. And this is a really short read, and they were so nice to send that to me, so... All right, the next book is a book that I actually picked up at Half Price Books because we just went to Miami like a month ago, and I was going to actually read this in Miami because I always like to read books that kind of like take place where I'm going. Do you guys like to do that? I love that. So I got this book that actually takes place in Miami and the Keys because I like Google searched it, um, but I didn't end up I didn't end up taking it with me. So the book is James W. Hall's Tropical Breeze. Chicago Tribune says they are on all these books, aren't they? Wry, vivid, wonderful, a first-rate thriller. Um, in an exotic blue water locale where greed and criminality thrive, the mysterious disappearance of Thorne's boyhood friend, Gayton Richards, an FBI agent, entangles Thorne in a web of violence and intrigue that takes him from uh, seamy local bars to glittering ocean villas. Then, when Thorne and Gayton's beautiful sister become lovers, ooh, he finds himself facing a jealous lunatic stalking her, a rogue government agent involved in a murderous scam in an unforgettable underworld of petty crooks, hired guns, and dangerous losers. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, oh, who's the guy? I can't think of what his name is now. That right? He wrote, like, Jackie Brown and those books. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? He passed away, I think. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, like, super excited to read this. I thought maybe it would even quote him on here or something, but no. More Chicago Tribune on the back. James W. Hall has nailed down the Florida Keys like a hurricane stutter or shutter. It's his territory now. Tropical free freeze is proof. So anyway, he lives in Southern Florida, so it should be. Anyway, I'm super excited about reading this book. I'm going to wait to read this by the pool. Um, okay, and then I cannot remember who sent this to me. I apologize, you guys, but, um, oh, well, here it says, Ricky. Ricky sent this to me. So, um, well, she sent it to Alex, actually. Um, so, and she actually, sent, she sent me something else. I can't remember what the book she sent me. But Alex, my husband, loves reality TV. He loves Bravo. He loves Million Dollar Listing, that TV show. And so, she sent him, uh, Frederick Eklund's The Sell, The Secrets of Selling Anything to Anyone, because Alex is in marketing and sales. And so she sent this to him, and she left a very nice note inside. So I wanted to include this in a video and then hand it over to him so he can read. The next book is um, something that an author reached out to me, and they asked me if I would read it for a review. I have to say it's a very fantasy. You guys know I'm not the lover of fantasy, but I'll give it a try. It's not super long. It is 317 pages, and that is Charles Wellington II's Corsana and book one of the Phalanx Syndicate. He dreamed of being a hero. C.K., Christopher Knight, has a secret. He's a, a psionic, a human with the ability to will things to happen with the power of his mind. And while he is kept to his sha the shadows, Christopher has always dreamt about being a hero. But hanging from the ceiling of a cave, being tortured, and getting his face pummeled by an orc wasn't part of the dream. And then it goes on to further description. But Corsana, you can look it up on Goodreads, by Richard Wellington II. So... I'm pretty excited to try this. I love when authors reach out to me. And then the other book that I got, and I actually got this part of Muse Monthly, Muse Box Monthly, is All Grown Up by Jamie Attenberg, author of The Middle Signs. And uh, for the New York Times bestselling author of The Middle Signs comes a wickedly funny novel about a 39-year-old single, child-free woman who defies convention as she seeks connect, uh, connection. And it's just getting, like, literally, like, right there she is. Rave reviews. And I did a whole video on my unboxing, so I'm not going to read this book. You can go look at the unboxing. This is the most recent one. Okay. So those are the physical books. Because I'm trying not to read a lot of physical books right now because I'm trying to get done with the physical books that I have so I can start over there on my bookshelves. All right. Let's get into um, the Audible books that I bought. Oh, my God. Okay. So... I walked in 
to a half price books today. Just on a whim, I was like, I'm just gonna buy something and I am looking at the young adult and I didn't even know this book was out yet and I actually asked for an ARC and I never got responded to, which big deal, they never, publishing companies never respond to me for ARCs. Like they just don't, okay? I'm so happy for all these booktubers out there, but they don't respond to me, okay? They're like, Peter Mon, who, what? Peter likes books, we don't know. Anyway, and that's fine because I'm all about purchasing books to you know help further the money for <laughs> the earnings for authors because I think it's important. Okay. So anyway, the book, now listen, okay? Favorite book of all time if you watch me, or favorite book of all time if you watch me regularly, you know, is To Kill Mockingbird, okay? Number three favorite book of all time is Catcher on the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Do you guys know what my number two book of all time is? <sighs> Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin and Eilir Sayens. Alex sat there today and I, he, Repronounced it because he's Venezuelan. His name over and over and over for me. I can't do the R's. I'm sorry, but he got it now. Okay. The inexplicable logic of my life. I saw it at the bookstore. I was like, oh my God. I had one of those Christine moments. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. His new book is out. His new book is out. It came out like a month and a half ago. I was like, oh my God. I didn't even know it. I was like, it came out a month and a half ago. Oh my God. I literally left the store, went to my car because because I love reading his books, but the audible versions are, oh, oh my God. Like, you know when you go to a restaurant and it is so fantastic, but at the end they bring you this most amazing lava cake or some kind of dessert tiramisu you've never had before? I don't care, carrot cake, whatever. And you're like, oh my God, the dinner was so good, but this dessert is like a hundred times better. The audible version of Benjamin Eilir Sienz's books are incredible, okay? So good. So I bought it in my car. I was so excited. Then I have to tell you, I was even more excited because I just finished that book that I was talking about, right? Rising Sun. And I was, uh, before I walked in the store, I had already downloaded my next book that I bought. So last year I read Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. Oh, he's so good looking, first of all, right? Married with kids. But I, hey, listen, you know, it's still so... Just because the restaurant's closed and I'm married and he's married doesn't mean that you can't look at the menu. So anyway... I love Sleeping Giant so much, and I know a lot of people didn't like it, but it was hands down one of the best books I read last year, okay? And I actually listened to it on Audible too. Well, I tweeted him last year, and I was like, I can't wait till part two comes out. Could I please get an ARC? Yeah, no problem. Well, nobody notified me that the new one came out. Waking Gods, Themis Files part two is out. I'm so, so excited. Um, I don't want to pull, pull these up because it'll start downloading them. You know how that goes. So I'm sorry I don't have pictures with these. But that is, I'm so excited to read that. Now the next book I got on Audible is like everybody is talking about it. It's in every bookstore that I go to. It's on everywhere on Audible, bestseller and everything, is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book is supposedly incredible. And it's like, a, I think it's about um, an African-American girl that grows up in the projects. But she ends up, um, go, or she goes to a private school, and it's how she balances out her life between the two. I, you, that's all I know about this book. But I have heard phenomenal things about this book. Um, and then I'm real into these uh, memoirs right now. I just finished um, A Girl Walks Out of a Bar. I do not believe I'll be doing a review on that book. Um, it was not my favorite. I just, it, As far as an alcoholic memoir, I didn't love it. But this one is... How to Murder Your Life, a memoir by Kat Marnell. I've heard really, really good things about it. I'm super excited about it. So, and then, and I don't know the name of it, so I apologize, but Paula Hawkins, who wrote Girl on the Train, I love the book. I know a lot of you didn't, but I loved the book. It was not a, cat, a woman in Cabin in Ten. Ugh! That book by Ruth Ware. Who, what, how did that book ever get anywhere? That book was horrid. So anyway, um, but the woman on the, tr the girl on the train, I loved that book so much. I listened to it on Audible last year. The movie, mm, I didn't like it so much. I have to be honest with you, we didn't even finish it. But her new book comes out like May 4th and I already ordered it, pre-ordered it, so it'll just show up on my Audible. I love that so much. So some of the other things that I got are The Most Dangerous Place on Earth uh, by Lindsay Lee Johnson. My Best Friend's Exorcism by uh, Grady Hendrix. The Knicks by Nathan Hill. I was supposed to do uh, read a, uh, Buddy Reads with uh, Graham, a Mega Man Chief fan, but he read it like in 24 hours, even though it's like, I don't know, something like 800 pages long. The Forgetting by Sharon Cameron. Yeah, and that's about it. So I'm so excited. I have like hours. I went through here, you guys, the other day. Do you know how many, un listen, these are my unfinished books. Can you even see this? Here, let me show you. These are my unfinished books on Audible. I have 42. 42 unfinished books on Audible. I better get to it.
The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen, as if I'll ever read that. It's like two hours. Oh, one hour and 14 minutes. I can get that done real quick. Anyway, that's my book haul for spring. So I'm getting excited to see, you know, what else is sent to me. But I, actually, I've had recently, I, I lied. Some publishers have reached out to me. So I'm excited about that. I have some books coming to me. And um, I some, some books coming out that I want, but I'm not going to talk about them until I do a haul. So anyway, and then next week, I'm going to do an unhaul because I have a bunch of books in my basement that are going to half-price books. So I've never done that before. I've never taken books to half-price books. I'm kind of scared of it, honestly. Um, and I don't know why. Do you ever get scared of something you've never done before just for no good reason but just to be scared? That's me. So anyway, I love you guys so much. Follow me on all my social media. I'm super active. Um, follow me on Goodreads. Follow me on Snapchat. Follow me on the Twitter and the Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And don't forget to like and subscribe and to hit that notification bell because it's very important. And to follow my daily vlog, Peter Vlogs, which is listed below, or my main channel, Peter Mont. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.